can use physics to answer what is the minimum height of a chimney so that it operates efficiently? We're going to uncover some beautiful physics answering this question from the International Physics Olympiad and then a variation of this question recently appeared on the JEE Advanced 2023. So we have some air that enters the furnace, the burning happens inside of the furnace and then the smoke starts escaping along the chimney of height H. The volume of gas or smoke produced by the chimney per unit time is given to be B. I always prefer translating words into math, so I'm just going to say that dV by dt is equal to B. This is just the volume flow rate. We're also given in the question that the speed of the particles within the furnace is negligible. Hmm, but our question is asking about the minimum height, so how are we going to approach this question? The idea is that we're going to use the Bernoulli principle to try and calculate the speed at the top of the chimney. Well, oh, hang on a minute, my chimney is not even equal on one side, so let's just fix that a little bit. That's a bit better. So the idea is that we're going to apply Bernoulli's equation to try and calculate the speed at which this fluid is exiting the chimney. Now, in order to do that, we're going to carefully look at two points. One point will be at a height h above this zero point. So let's take this point here to be h is equal to zero. And then another one will not quite be at the zero point, but just a little bit below it. So let's just take a small amount. Let's call that negative epsilon. Small enough that there's no significant pressure variations and things like that from zero to there. I suddenly feel like a mathematician teaching real analysis. Let's assume that epsilon is a small infinitesimal value. Okay, so on a string line, we're going to apply Bernoulli's equation first at this point and then at height h. So this in turn will turn this equation into a half row. Let's just say v at height h squared plus rho g uh, multiplied Oh, this should not be a function, this should just be the height z, so rho times g multiplied by h plus the pressure at height h, and that in turn is going to equal to a half rho v at minus epsilon squared plus rho g at minus epsilon plus p of minus epsilon. Okay, so the question says that the speed is essentially zero inside of the furnace, so I'm going to essentially ignore this term. And we also have rho g times minus epsilon. Now, if minus epsilon is a tiny, tiny number, I don't know, minus 0 0.00001 or something like that, then this term here will essentially be very, very close to zero. So I'm going to ignore that as well. Please also note that initially when we're setting up this equation, this pressure here really is the pressure of the smoke. And here comes the condition to actually make this chimney work. The pressure of the smoke that is actually coming out has to be at least equal or greater than the pressure of the air that's actually surrounding it. So as a minimum condition for the minimum height, I'm going to say that P of H of the smoke has to be at least equal to the pressure of the air at that height h. So let's just rewrite our equation. So I'm going to go a half rho v of h squared plus rho g h plus p of air times h will be given by, now we only have one term here, which is the pressure at a small infinitesimal value just underneath this line here, which should be equal to the air pressure at this level. Now, what is the air pressure at this level? Well, due to hydrostatic equilibrium, this will be greater than the pressure here. So that's gonna be P of air times h, plus the density of 
of the air multiplied by g multiplied by the height h. Once again, I'm just assuming that there's no significant pressure variation if I go from here to here because this is just a tiny number. Okay, and now we can just cancel some stuff out so p of air can go and we can start rearranging this equation while we're drinking coffee. Uh, for the speed, so I'm gonna go a half rho vh squared is equal to rho air gh, take away rho gh. This rho here, by the way, stands for the density of the smoke. Okay, then what we get is a half rho vh squared is equal to gh, and then we have the density of the air, take away the density of the smoke. Now let's bring this factor of 2 up here. Then when I'm going to divide the whole thing by rho and uh, then we're just going to square root this. Then we have our final expression for vh which is going to be the square root of 2gh. Now just to be absolutely explicit that this here is the density of the smoke, I'm just gonna give it a subscript. I really should have given it throughout the whole equation but it's kind of like early morning when I'm filming this so forgive me. Rho air divided by rho smoke take away rho minus rho over rho is just one. Okay, and now we have an expression for the velocity um, as the smoke is coming out. Now let's go back to the volume flow rate. So we know that dv by dt is uh, this letter b and we want to express our answer in terms of b and also the temperature change. So v here is the volume, so uh, we can always say that dA times h where a is the area, h is the height divided by dt is given to b. Now let's take the constant area out, so what we get is the h by dt is equal to b, and this here is just the vertical speed, so um, we know that a times the speed v is equal to b, meaning of course that v is just b over a. Well, we know that v is equal to this, but it's also equal to that, so what I'm going to do uh, let's say over here is to say that 2gh uh, multiplied by density of air divided by the density of the smoke take away 1 and because I've squared this I need to square b squared divided by a squared. Okay, so we're kind of getting there. Now we can uh, find an expression for the height, which would be for b squared, a squared, a squared, g, and the density is equal to rho over rho smoke. Okay, we have an expression for the height in terms of the density of the air and density of the smoke. The question, though, is asking us to provide the ex expression for the height in terms of the differences in temperature between the ambient temperature and between the ambient air temperature and the temperature of the smoke which kind of makes sense if you're building a chimney you probably want to be looking at the temperature gradient and not the differences in density. Okay well assuming that this thing behaves in here as an ideal gas we can write that PV is equal to NRT. So P times mass over density is equal to NRT. I can never remember this formula so I always kind of derive it. So P is given by rho n over mrt, so P is equal to the density n over m, that's just 1 over the molar mass rt. Now here is an assumption, we're going to assume that the pressure is a constant, we know that R is a constant, we know that the molar mass is a constant, uh, therefore we can say that rho times t is equal to a constant, that would mean that rho air times 
t air is equal to rho smoke times t smoke. This of course would mean that rho air over rho smoke is equal to t smoke over t air. Okay, well this over that is equal to that. Therefore, this means that h will be given by b squared over a two two g over Rho air over rho smoke is just T smoke over T air, take away one. Okay, now let's actually play a little bit around with the algebra. So what we get is that H is B squared, A squared, 2G multiplied by T smoke, take away T air, divided by t air raised to the power of minus one h is b squared a squared 2g let's flip this fraction finally uh, multiply by the t air divided by the change in temperature and, and this right here is the minimum height of this chimney considering all of those assumptions because you've watched this video right until the end, that means that you love beautiful physics problems and for another amazing problem from the International Physics Olympiad, you need to click over here. Enjoy.